six reverse racism. The editing is taking longer and we bring you part seven the new democracy two. Uh, a an initiative that Dennis Beckett the well-known activist for democracy for the last 30 40 years and he stuck with it talks to Becky I support Dennis's principles. However, I still question how we're going to achieve it. Myself and Dennis don't always meet the understanding around what I see as a problem. So we brought Dennis and Becky together and we let them discuss Dennis's principles and concept of a new democracy which is going to be very interesting to all your viewers out there. From my side, what I would like you to keep your eyes on is to what extent Dennis, a committed activist for democracy, Becky, a committed act activist for equality, battle to find one another. At what stage do they get onto the same level? And this is the important thing about the black and white intercourse for people to look at to what extent we assume other people understand us we assume other people are receptive to us who is going to be the first on YouTube to say to me Cedric I've understood Becky before Dennis did or Cedric I've understood Dennis before Becky did. Here's a challenge to you. Let's see how we respond to that challenge. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I'm going to go on from the point that I'm making. I'm saying that there is one weapon that has not been used to, particularly by poor people. And that weapon is the effective vote. Effective vote. We have now a reusable vote. We know that we're going to have another vote in, um, in um, uh, 2014. We know that, that we have a vote, but it's not a good vote. There's nobody in the system who is scared of your vote. There's nobody in politics who's scared of you coming to them and saying, hey, either do this or I'm going to vote for the other party or a different party next time. All I'm wanting is a society where Somebody in the system with his foot on the platform of the pyramid of power. Mm -hmm. Somebody, when you come <coughs> along and say, hey, I want X, Y, and Z, or I'm going to go and vote for somebody else next time, somebody's got to jump. At the moment, nobody's going to jump. You really, they know that everybody around you is going to vote for the ANC. They think not exactly. Mm -hmm. Not exactly. What are people going to do about that? They vote for DA. We have so many people who are the members of DA them. now. Really? Yes, we do. Even around here? Yes, everywhere. You really? Is that yes. So? Okay. So where do you get well, this? I won't argue with you on this, but I'll still say to you, nobody is scared of your vote. I want somebody to be who actually exercises power to be worried about what you vote the next time, what that guy votes next time, what that guy votes next time. But how do we achieve? Well, you, by changing the system. What I'm saying is. I want a change in the foundation by which we conduct politics. This is not a particularly ambitious thing. We already changed the foundation. We here in South Africa, in your memory and in mine, we changed. We used to have a system where some people, like me and Cedric, had the right to vote and you did not have the right to vote. Yes. We changed the foundation so that you've acquired the right to vote. That's moving from a bad situation to a better situation. But your vote doesn't really mean much to you. If you want 
if you want to, that the local school must teach Hebrew. Just imagine anything that you might want. You want that the local school must teach Hebrew. You have no chance of establishing it. Even if you persuaded all the people around here, the people who come to your lessons, that this would really be a good thing, you would still have no chance of establishing it. It's not your business. It's the government's business. Now, I want a society where when you seek objectives, aims, in your community, you can achieve those objectives. But, to me, what is important, I do not say to you, you're an island, go and be a little island on your own. I say you're part of a whole. I'm saying if we all had power to vote for local communities that exercise power, that matter, and for regional communities that matter, for a national community that matters. So all of these places matter to us, which currently they don't really matter. The only thing that matters to us is using government. One big thing. If we voted for all those places and they matter, we have choices there. That is, in short, what I'm saying ends up with a good deal of stability, a good deal more progress and contentment than we have now. And it also, I conclude on this point, there's a, a big issue of what about the difference between rich people in this country and poor people? Everybody's dissatisfied that there is a huge difference. Nobody really sees how do you make that difference smaller in a constructive way. I'm saying when everybody has that vote, that vote that matters, and you are using, poor people in particular, are using the effective weapon. The effective weapon is not an axe, it's not an AK-47. The effective weapon that will bring long-term lasting results is the effective vote. It's true, everybody knows that. Not really, because we're satisfied. Generally speaking, people are satisfied with the vote that you have at the moment. I'm saying the vote you have at the moment is a, it's a skinny little thing. But it's not a healthy thing, it's a token vote. It's a token vote where once in five years you go along and most people go and vote in a way that you can predict by just taking one look at them. Most people anywhere do. But I think it's your assumption that people will say to you, assume that. I think it's a reasonable They will say it when the people are voting for local government. Yes. Uh, there are parties. There will be the DA. There will be Azabo, PAC, whoever in Qatar, mm -hmm. but the people will choose, or the majority of the people will choose a certain party, maybe because of the marketing skill. Are you with me? If partly marketing skill, partly history, etc. Listen, my point is this: when you you've got that set of names. Mm -hmm. And those are all your national parties. Mm -hmm. You know actually quite well. You aren't going to go and find a Sutu guy who's going to be voting in Qatar. You're going to find a Zulu guy and only an occasional Zulu guy. A rural Zulu guy. You aren't actually going to be finding... You're going to find mostly around... Let's not argue what people vote. Let me stick to the point. Your vote here achieves... It's a formality. It doesn't actually enable you to... It doesn't enable you to change the local law to say you're entitled to have uh, a you're entitled to have a restaurant outside there, outside your uh, furniture shop and your church. No, you need. For example, a, you, need a, you need a license. Who? You say yes, you can have it, but you need a license. Yes, but what I would like is that you not only have to get the license, but you have a, sh a share, a say in figuring out who needs a license, when do you need a license, why do you need a license. It should be your business, rather than you must just go to some official and apply for a license that somebody else has decided on. Yes, but uh, here we are having a problem of uh, the dead people. Mm -hmm. All right? If you want to look at, or you want to allow yourself to look at the people that you're talking about, that they were killed, for 300 years, these people have been in a graveyard. Yes. So you can never just think they're supposed to, and they don't even know nothing about no government. They don't know nothing about no systems. Yes. Are you with me? I am. So these people, as you talk about, maybe they will vote a certain party because of history behind it. Are you with me? But the dead people are not voting. 
you don't understand they do vote yes crops do vote that is why yeshua later named Jesus christos or christ by british yes or the english people yes. he said to his people but there are a walking dead people here are you with me yes so that is why he says sometimes to one of his uh student he said let the dead bury the dead he meant those who are dead living or walking could do the job of the dead people because they are dead anyway so what i'm saying about these people were killed 300 years ago yes. there's just a voice coming up say just wake up obviously there will be no direction it may take another 20 years another one on top of this for them to really see now i've heard many many interesting objections to the argument that i make but you're the winner <laughs> i've never heard that objection before hmm? that's it the people were killed by the system of the past if they were killed by the system of the past are they different to if they just died uh, according to the eyes of the world hmm. they are different because they are talking they say truth commission. Uh, they say we are one, Simone. They say we are equal. Knowing deep down in your soul that we will never be. We are not. 300 years of the dead people. How can they just come up today from the graveyard and be equal to the one who's been surviving all of these 300 years? Now, I. Uh... There are some questions to which I don't even begin to offer the start of an answer. And this is one of them. I cannot say how those people will be equal after 300 years. I cannot say that, no. But you see, my concern is I'm more worried about the people who are living and who often feel that they are not getting a square deal, who often feel that they are dissatisfied with the way that the world is unfolding, unfolding who often feel that they're called equal, but actually they don't really have the opportunities and the openings available to them that other people do. I'm saying, do you want the opportunities and openings to be available for everybody? If so, I'm saying, let's have a foundation, the foundation of political relationships that really, really works. I'm saying, we, when we've got works better than the one we used to have, but it doesn't work all that well. And we get, and Cedric wants to know, how do we get to it? It's I'm saying, as we find more people think, ah, we haven't got to the end now. This idea that we can all go to the polls once every five years and cross to vote isn't the end. There's much better ways of people ruling. When people realize that and talk about it and discuss it a little bit, it will not take very long before we agree as a society to move the next step up, which is not difficult to do, it doesn't involve controversy or hostility, it doesn't involve fights. It brings us to a time that there will be no political warfare, there will be no point in, you will achieve nothing by violence in politics, and it brings us to a time that we will be moving towards, constantly moving towards, a fairer society, measured by the votes of people. I'm with you, but do you still understand that the dead people, when Moshe had to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, it was a struggle for how many years? 40 years in the wilderness, because they were dead. They were supposed to ease up the Egyptian thought in their veins. Godwa, Baba, Godwa. The dead people, even now, if we're talking politics and the relationships between people, the dead people even now aren't playing a role in that. They don't go to the polls and cast their vote. So also in the society I'm talking about, they also wouldn't be doing that. No, they, they do. Might be